All right, and here we get into the new molds in this new wave of generations. Here is Deluxe Skids, uh, based off his IDW version, uh, as Alex Milne designed from More Than Meets the Eye. Um, he does come with uh, the special comic, which in this case is a copy of More Than Meets the Eye 22, which is, uh, I, I believe, the most recent issue of More Than Meets the Eye that is out. Um, the kind of end cap to the whole first quote-unquote season of More Than Meets the Eye uh, and the crew of the Lost Light uh, before we get into Dark Cybertron. Um, also, just a real quick note, you might hear some music in the background for the, for the next couple of videos. Um, the piece we're playing on the radio right now is uh, Heinrich Goretzky's Symphony No. 3, which is one of my favorite pieces of all time. It's just very haunting and beautiful, and like I'm not going to miss listening to it while I'm shooting my reviews. Uh, it's actually fairly contemporary as far as classical music goes. It's from like 1976, but... Uh, I really, really love it, and so I, I want, I want to kind of, you might hear me hum a little bit while I'm, while I'm playing, but uh, yeah, so you just got learned a little bit there. But anyway, on to Skids. Um, here he is with his, uh, his rifle. Uh, it's not quite, it's not quite exactly the binary gun that he had in the series. I don't want to get into too much about what the binary gun does, because some of you, if you haven't, if you're planning on reading the comics, I don't want to spoil it. It is technically a binary gun in the fact that it does split apart into both a small pistol and a larger rifle. So if you want to think of it as a binary gun in that sense, you certainly can. It almost feels like this is a clip and should be on the bottom, but then you've got the, but, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the handle on top. But you'll notice there is actually a little groove here in the bottom of this little hole for this little tab to fit into. It, it does, it is specifically designed to plug together that way. So, uh, yeah. But you can, yeah, you can give them a couple different uh, gun options. The car himself, like, he looks a lot like uh, animated, or not animated, Prime Rumble. Uh, same basic car design. Um, and, and I say basic, it's, it's not, if you put the two side by side, they probably don't look too specific to each other at all. But it's, it's very reminiscent of Rumble's uh, vehicle mode from the Prime line. And you can see him folded up. Uh, somebody asked earlier about could you paint red on the back of his hands because uh, he doesn't come with that paint app. And you can see there's obvious, there's, there actually is quite a bit of clearance here from the back of the hand in uh, vehicle mode, and you, and you don't really, unless you're really rough, you're not going to scrape that pasta piece to get it in there. So you could very easily put some of the paint apps on his hands if you wished uh, and not have them get damaged during transformation. So yeah, rolls really nicely. Um, <laughs> that's, that's kind of a minor feature for some. Some people don't know why I uh, show that off, but sometimes it's just fun to roll a little car around. So yeah, he's got a lot about symbol right there on the hood. And he's a very nice little shade of blue with some red and white stripes. Not quite the little hatchback. It looks like a hatchback either, but like he's not quite the little the squarish boxy car he was in G1. But uh, that, that's kind of true with just about all of the new figures. So yeah, here we go. Let's go ahead and get him transformed. Let's go ahead and pop the legs up here. These kind of the door is kind of going open. Oh, that leaves you. <laughs> so does not leave anything resembling the interior of a car available to you. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. So yeah, I bring the legs down like this. And these panels here on the side come down, flip the foot forward, and rotate it around. Come down, so it rotate. And then the arms. They actually uh, fold in here at the this pin joint like that, and they they tab in under there. Um, there's little tabs on the arm that tab in up under there, and those pull out a little bit, um, and that's what gives them most of a shoulder movement is, is that they do. You can push them in, but they do pull out uh, just like that to allow for transformation. And they will take him here. Uh, actually, gonna wait. A, we're gonna wait a second. Uh, you, this whole front end folds down like this. This whole back piece, uh, the, the guns, there, there's a latch here, and I don't know if there's a specific button to pop them up. I, I haven't seen it. It does catch that. The, the guns do spring forward uh, up over the shoulder, and I'm not sure if there's a specific mechanism to activate it. But, uh, but yeah. I totally forgot to show him off as comparison in vehicle mode to hoist. So there you go. There, that's about how big he is, <laughs> hoist in vehicle mode. Oh, I'm dumb. All right, anyway. We'll show them compared to hoist in robot mode in a minute. Um, yeah, and then this, and then you flip. This panel, like, when you first get this, one, this is kind of, it's just kind of friction pinned. It's, there's not a metal pin through here. It's kind of got some friction posts in there. So it is easy to pop the head off. Um, but if you're 
kind of push down on the front and flip it forward, um, and then you kind of snap it into place. And there, there again, you see it there, it popped out of the friction pin. Uh, go, when you first open the package, it comes in robot mode, and trying to flip this back, you think, this is wrong, this is wrong, I'm not doing this right. Um, but you are. Um, there actually is a tiny little stress mark. Tiny, tiny, it's teensy, teensy right there. But, uh, so just be careful doing it. That may help to shave some of that down a little bit, and maybe I'll do that later. When you bring this down, and then you bring this whole back assembly up, and that lets you turn the waist around. So turn the waist around. And then pop the uh, chest piece into place there. Now uh, the, w the wings, uh, the doors here flip out. This piece right here can come down. <coughs> Bring this up. Bring your arms down like this. And this kind of, you can kind of see there's a little groove in there to sit around this uh, silver peg. You just kind of snap that up under there. And you can angle the door wings however you want. And here's basic robot mode. Uh, there's a couple things we haven't done here yet. One, you want to make sure the foot snap all the way down and lock into place. So there's resistance there so they don't, so they don't fall forward. Um, now the guns here, they're, they're grooved together. Uh, there's no spring or anything, but they are uh, tied to each other. They're geared together is what I should have said. Um, and you can open those up and close them like that. Um, you can leave them folded down. Uh, the the guns you can actually if you want to if you don't want the the shoulder guns you can pull this down you can fold them back down and you can have those guns you don't have to have those shoulder guns deployed so you can have them in kind of a non armed uh, standard mode here just like this well, I got something in my eye here okay um, so you can have it in standard mode well, something I haven't done yet and I wanted to show this off people are complaining about his balance issues. You can kind of, you can click his foot all the way forward, and he's still a little wobbly. But I find if you take uh, at his shin, if you bend it down like that, so this kind of goes behind the shin, and then click it back at the knee, it looks a little bit more like his design in the comic with the, with the stylized uh, lower legs, and it makes him uh, much more stable. So like I said, uh, push it down, just, just so that goes behind there. It, you're not you're not forcing anything. It just goes right. It, it's not physically pushing past it. It just goes uh, goes past that, and then click it forward. One click at the knee, and then he stands just fine uh, without without stability issues. So that's nice. So there he is, all powered down, no weapons. I mean, I guess the guns on his arms are still there, but uh, he's not he's not in full on armor mode. And then you can flip the the, the, the back guns up, as we've already seen over his shoulders. You can flip out his arm guns on both hands. You can give him this giant rifle in both either a single rifle or dual mode configuration. Let's go ahead and give him two guns. Because why not? And then, on top of all that, up here on his shoulders, these pieces right here, the, the outer wheel rim, rotate down to give him some shoulder missile launchers. And there is Skids, all armored up and ready to take out some bad guys. I think that's pretty impressive that you can have them like completely powered down or all weaponed up. Um, and unlike the other ones, which I'd already reviewed versions of their mold before, since Skids is a new mold, we'll go ahead and do an articulation uh, thing. He does have ball joints here at his ankles, so like they, they don't go in very much, but yeah, you, you can get some uh, a little bit of inward ankle tilt there. Um, as well as they rotate around very well. I don't know why you'd ever need him to go up like, you know, his ankle to tilt out like that, but you can do it. Uh, he's got ratcheting, he does have an extra point of articulation here, but I usually just leave it like that. Um, he's got clicky ratcheting knees, a thigh swivel, uh, ball joint hips. He does have the waist swivel, which you saw during transformation. Now he's got, again, this little piece on his arm at his, at his bicep can flip in uh, for transformation, but it does not flip out. Uh, don't force it. Um, so it's not really useful much as posability. Um, he does have uh, an el hinge elbow. Um, he's got a ball jointed head, which is nice. And then the shoulders are all in ball joints. And uh, if you pull them out, just because of uh, they're not super articulated, but uh, you do get a pretty decent range of movement out of them. They're not, uh, he, you know, he's not going to be like monkeying, swinging from vines or anything. But uh, 
but you do get a, a semi-decent range of movement out of them. If you leave them tucked in, and they kind of come tucked in in the package, and I've seen some pictures where he's had his shoulders tucked in like that, and they look really, really lame, but if you, if you pop them out the way they should be, there's actually a semi-decent bit of articulation. If you pull the backpack down a little bit, you can get even more out of it. So it's really up to you. Um, you know, you can, fold, you can fold the wings down, get them out of the way a little bit more, um, and, and clear out some places. So depending on how you personally configure your skids, uh, you'll get a little bit more or less shoulder articulation out of it. Um, and since I've been bending his knees all over the place, uh, ba obviously based on personal preference. Let's go ahead and get him back in more of a standard configuration here. See, personally, like those forearm guns, like I, I just like to leave them folded down but underneath there. It's neat that they have them, but uh, I just feel when they're deployed, they, they get in the way too much. So yeah, there's skids. And as promised, here he is with uh, the first or earlier wave hoist. This is wave three, not wave two. So there he is, uh, size comparison with hoist. Uh, if you want to get a size with a bumblebee slash goldfire mold, Oh, there you go. He's a little bit taller than Bumblebee at the head. Just teensy, but but there. And, and same with same with Hoist. Just slightly, slightly taller. So yeah, it's a very nice representation of the comic book skids. It's not perfect, but um, it's a nice new figure. It's an it's a, like I said, it's a nice updated representation of skids, regardless of how faithful it is to the. Uh, the comic book, and, and like I said, I'm, and I really am glad that they're giving us a lot of these IDW-inspired designs. He should have red on his hands, um, and uh, I know that made Josh, the colorist, all sad, but uh, you can fix it. Fix it, Felix. Um, so yeah, they're skids. Uh, very cool. Definitely worth picking him up, I think, out of this wave. Um, I think he's my second favorite out of the wave for, uh, this, for this new set of Generations figures.